Welcome back everyone to another ACE lecture. This is a fairly short lecture that focuses on different functions of the skin system. We are going to discuss the structure of skin system including the epidermis, dermis, and hypodermis, and then finally discuss the structures that are derived from the skin system like for instance the nails and hairs. So basically the skin or integument is the largest part of the body that accounts for 15 percent of the total body weight and the functions of the system include to provide physical barrier and protection so basically the skin system limit movement of chemicals while it also provides mechanical protection against pathogens so it's a barrier against pathogens in fact that's the reason that if we have a cut in our skin that's the time that now we are prone to potential infection in that site of injury. In addition, there are oil and sweat glands that are secreted by the skin that will decrease pH of the skin surface as a consequence of which it would inhibit growth of pathogens. And then finally, the sweat also contains the enzyme called lysozyme, which digests bacterial cell wall. So digest cell wall of the bacterium and again that's another mode of providing protection against pathogens. The next function is osmoregulation and because skin epidermis has a thick and keratinized layer it is waterproof and protect against dryness and desiccation. So protects against desiccation. And at the same time, it will also prevent excess water from getting absorbed into the body once we are immersed in water. Of course, there will be some absorption of water once we lay in water, but then it won't be to a point that caused bursting of our cells. So it provides a mechanism for osmoregulation. The skin is also important for heat regulation. And so one mechanism is by evaporation. of sweat from the skin as a consequence of which it will lower the body temperature. There is also radiant heat loss from dilated vessels. So once there is dilated vessels, now the heat can be dissipated from the surface of the skin and consequently there would be a decrease in body temperature. On the other hand, if there is constriction of vessels, then there would be heat retention. So it would help maintain high temperature in the body. Alternatively, if our body temperature drops, that's the time that there would be contraction of the erector pili, smooth muscles that are attached to our hair follicles, so these are attached to our hair follicles, causing development of goosebumps. And so goosebumps will now be able to trap air and prevent further loss of heat. So basically, if you have your skin here, when temperature is normal, the erector pili is not contracting. However, when temperature drops, that's the time that erector pili will contract and cause goosebumps as a consequence of which heat will now get trapped in between these hairs. The next function of the skin system is to provide protection against UV light and it also helps with, with vitamin D synthesis. So basically there are melanin pigments in our skin that absorb the UV light and prevent it from reaching the deeper organs. And then inside the skin also there would be conversion of cholesterol into vitamin D which helps with absorption of calcium. Another important function of the skin is sensation. So basically there are neuronal receptors located in the dermis layer of our skin 
that allows different sensations, like for instance, sensation of pain, sensation of heat, cold, touch, vibration, and so on. And then the final job of the uh, skin system is to act as a blood reservoir because the dermal vascular supply is very extensive. It can hold a large volume of blood. So it can hold a large volume of blood. And so during periods of vigorous exercise, there would be constriction of these cutaneous blood vessels in order to allow shunting of blood back to the muscles. Next, we're going to discuss different stru structures of the skin, starting from the superficial layer called epidermis, and then moving on to a more deeper layer called dermis and hypodermis. So this image, I have got it from the Wikipedia. So is the next one, and that would help me with the description of the epidermis. So the top or the outermost layer of the skin is called epidermis. And here, I'm showing the, you the structure of epidermis up to this point. And from here on, at the bottom, you can see that there's a transition between epidermis and the dermis that is shown in a wider color. So the epidermis is divided into five layers. And if we do have a memory aid, and that's called Californians like girls in short bikinis. All right, so Californians like girls in short bikinis. So the order of the structures of the epidermis from outside to inside is stratum corneum, Let me pick a different color, stratum corneum, stratum lucidum, the next one is G, stratum granulosum, stratum spinosum, and then finally stratum basal. So starting with stratum basal, basically, this is the deepest layer of epidermis, which is in contact with the dermis. And this layer contains four types of cells. One, it contains keratinocytes, which will slowly move superficially and lose their nucleus and produce keratin. And so consequently, the superficial layer of the skin contains a barrier of dead cells with keratin, which has been arrived from the keratinocytes that are originally being found in the stratum basal. The next type of cell that you find here are melanocytes, which produce melanin, which is the color pigment that gives our skin color in order to protect us from the UV light. Next, we have Langerhorn or dendritic cells, which are basically the epidermis macrophages that help ingest pathogens and the foreign material. And then finally, we have Merkel cells, which are attached to the sensory neuron in order to enhance our sensations of touch. Okay, now moving on to the next layer which is stratum spinosum, providing resistance to mechanical stress. The next layer is stratum granulosum, which basically provides waterproofing properties to the skin. And it's also the layer inside which the um, keratinocytes will start to lose their nucleus and die. Next layer is stratum lucidum, which is basically found only in thick layers of skin, like for instance, the skin, the hairless skin that is found at the sole of our foot and our palms. And then finally, the most superficial layer is called stratum corneum, which contains multiple layers of keratin filled as well as flattened keratinocytes that provides physical protection. So this layer has multiple layers of keratin filled and flattened keratinocytes. The next layer of the skin is called dermis, which has abundant concentration of collagen and elastic fibers in order to provide elasticity. So this layer provides elasticity and tensile strength 
to the skin and it's also the layer of the blood that contains nerves, blood vessels, lymphatic vessels as well as the glands. So here in the dermis you will find nerves, blood vessels, lymphatic vessels, as well as exocrine glands. And then finally, we have the hypodermis layer, which is the subcutaneous fat layer. So this is the subcutaneous fat layer that acts as an insulator to help preserve heat and is also as a storehouse for energy. So here you can see the hypodermis layer has a lot of fat cells that are shown in yellow. Now, the last topic to discuss here is derivative structures of the skin. So which structures arise from the skin? And these include hair, the primary function of which is to provide physical protection. Like for instance, think of the hair that is on our head and helps us protect our brain from injuries. Or the other example is hairs that is in our nostrils to protect against airborne particles. Now regarding the composition of hair, each, each hair is made of a shaft, which is basically the dead portion of the hair that is projecting above the skin surface. So this is the dead portion that is above skin surface. And then the second structure is the root of the hair which is located within the hair follicle and this is located inside the dermis layer. So here you can see that we have a hair follicle located within the skin dermis. The next structure is the nail, which is formed from compressed layer of the outer epidermis. So nail is formed from compressed layers of outer epidermis. And what was the name of the outer epidermis? Remember, Californians like girls in short bikinis. So compressed layers of stratum corneum, which is the outermost layer of the epidermis. And due to the presence of dense and parallel keratin fibrils, so there is dense and parallel keratin fibrils inside the nails that give it a hard structure. The next structure is callus. And so basically over areas of the skin that there is too much friction, there would be increased mitotic activity at the stratum basal layer. So friction will induce increased mitotic activity at stratum basal layer in order to form an extra layer of physical protection. And then finally, we have exocrine glands, which are all located in the dermis layer and receive the nutrients from the nearby vasculature. Remember how we said that the dermis contains the blood vessels? So by having the glands in the dermis layer, they would get their uh, nutrient supply from the blood vessels. And there are different forms of glands that I would like to discuss with you. A, we have sebaceous oil glands which produce an oily substance that is called sebum. And this sebum is being secreted at the shaft of the hairs in order to make them waterproof and also makes them kind of flexible to prevent them from breaking. So sebum is being secreted at shaft of the hair to make it one waterproof and two 
give the hair some flexibility and prevent it from being brittle. The second type of exocrine gland that we have is called a sweat gland, which itself is divided into two types. The first type is called an eccrine gland that is important for evaporation cooling. So when we are exercising, all the sweat that helps us uh, cool down our temperature is an example of an eccrine sweat gland, evaporation cooling. Versus the second type, that is an apocrine gland, that are thought to act as a sexual attractant by secreting sweat into hair follicles of the axillary and pubic region. So possibly it's a sexual attractant. And then finally, we have mammary glands, which are located in the breast and their function is to produce milk. So let me ask you a question. Which hormone was inducing the mammary glands to produce milk? Prolactin. And then which hormone was inducing secretion of milk by inducing contraction of the myoepithelial cells in the ducts of the mammary glands? Oxytocin. All right. I just want to ask you one more question before we move on to a practice question, and that is describe the process of keratinization. So we describe how keratinocytes are required for forming multiple layers of keratin um, filled layers of skin. So basically keratinocytes proliferate from stem cells and they continue to move on to the superficial layer of the skin. As they are going through through this process, they would undergo two changes. One, they continue to produce keratin. And second, they would lose their nucleus and other organs. Basically, they would die. And this has happened in the stratum granulosum. So we just discussed how we have keratinocytes located at stratum basalis. And these keratinocytes will keep moving superficially as they're moving superficially, they continue to produce keratin and they lose, by the time they reach stratum granulosum, they lose their nucleus so that basically they become dead. And so once they reach the stratum corneum, there are keratin filled cells that are flat and do not have any nucleus. So basically this layer is a flattened keratinocyte that is filled with keratin and provide physical protection. So back to this question, keratinocytes produce keratin and lose nucleus as they are moving superficially. And so by the time they reach the surface of the epidermis, they're dead, they're flat, and they're filled with keratin, which provides an excellent protective barrier to the skin. Now let's move on to some practice questions. Actually, we only have two practice questions for this video. The first one is, which of the following is the function of the skin? And then the second question is, which of the following is a true statement? So you can go ahead and pause this video. When you're ready to review the answer, you can replay the video. Okay, so which of the following is the function of, of, of the skin? It's required for vitamin E synthesis. No, it's required for vitamin D synthesis, not vitamin E. So the choice one is incorrect. It's required for hydroregulation. That's correct. We said it's required for osmoregulation. And so that answer choice would be correct. And it's also required for thermoregulation. We discussed four different mechanisms that the skin can help uh, regulate um, body temperature. So therefore, choice two and three would be correct. The next question, which of the following is a true statement? Sweat glands are located in the epidermis. Wrong. Sweat glands are located in the dermis. Hair follicles are located in the epidermis. Wrong. Hair follicles are also located in the dermis. Hypodermis acts as a heat insulator. That's correct because hypodermis has a lot of fat cells. So it can both act as a heat insulator and also acts as an energy reserver for any time that a body needs energy, use up those fat in order to produce energy. 
And then finally, stratum basal contains dead keratin filled keratinocytes. That's incorrect. That would be definition of stratum corneum, which was the most superficial layer of the skin. All right, so that concludes our discussion of the skin system. Thank you all for listening, and we will see you for the next video.